Hello, my support fibro friends. This video, we're going to cover the human nervous system, at least top level definitions of the components of the human nervous system. My name is Melissa Tolwar. I am the executive director of the Support Fibromyalgia Network. I am also a board certified functional medicine health coach that works in group medical visits, and I have additional training in neuroscience and functional nutrition. The nervous system is a complex network of specialized cells, tissues, and organs that coordinate and regulate the activities of the body. It is responsible for receiving, processing, and transmitting information throughout the body to facilitate communication and control various functions. At its core, the nervous system is composed of two main components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The nervous system plays a vital role in numerous physiological processes, such as sensory, perception, motor control, coordination, cognition, memory, emotions, and regulation of bodily functions like heartbeat, breathing, and digestion. It enables organisms to respond and adapt to changes in their environment and maintain homeostasis. Now, there are a lot to go over with the nervous system. It's very complex, but I just wanted to show you a visual diagram because sometimes when we talk in fibromyalgia, we tend to talk only about one system, but these systems communicate together. They send information, they receive information from the entire system. That's why it matters when we have more discussions with fibromyalgia to know how the nervous system works all together because that's how our body is. We can't separate ourselves. So it does matter. And I'm gonna be including some more links to other videos on the internet with some of my favorite people that go in depth into the nervous system. You'll find it fun. And especially if you wanna nerd out, there's a lot of great content, which I'll be sharing with you. The central nervous system is a crucial component of the nervous system and serves as the main control center for the body. It consists of two primary structures that are super important, the brain and the spinal cord. Together, the brain and the spinal cord regulate and control various bodily functions, including movement, sensation, perception, cognition, memory, and emotion. They work in tandem with the peripheral nervous system, which consists of nerves outside the central nervous system and facilitates communication and coordination through the body. So again, remember this two primary structures, the brain and the spinal cord for the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, it's comprised of a network of nerves and ganglia located outside the brain and spinal cord. It's very complex all throughout the body. The peripheral nervous system can be also be further divided in two main components, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The peripheral nervous system plays a crucial role in relaying sensory information from various parts of the body to the, sense, uh, to the central nervous system. And it also carries motor signals from the central nervous system to targeted tissues, organs, and muscles. It enables us to perceive the external environment, initiate voluntary movements, and regulate vital functions such as heart rate, digestion, and breathing. Let's dive into the somatic nervous system, which is part of the peripheral nervous system. The, the somatic nervous system is responsible for controlling voluntary movements. So remember this, conscious voluntary movements and transmitting sensory information to the central nervous system. It consists of sensory, sensory neurons that convey information from sensory receptors, such as those for touch, temperature, and even pain over to the central nervous system. The somatic nervous system also includes motor neurons that transmit signals from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles, enabling conscious movement and coordination. The nerves in this particular system deliver information from your senses to your brain. They also carry commands from your brain to your muscles so you can move around. The main function is sensory input and movement control. Now the somatic nervous system is prone to conditions that cause peripheral neuropathy. So in this term, we're meaning disease or damage to your peripheral nervous system. Your somatic nervous system involves things you can consciously sense and do. 
which differs from your autonomic nervous system, which kind of works without you thinking about it and kind of runs behind the scenes. Both of these are going to be subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is a network of nerves throughout your body that control unconscious processes. These are things that happen without you thinking about them, such as breathing and your heart beating. Your autonomic nervous system is always active, even when you're asleep, and it's key to continued survival. The autonomic nervous system is responsible for regulating involuntary functions and maintaining internal balance in the body. It controls various processes that will occur automatically without conscious effort. So remember, somatic conscious effort, autonomic nervous system without conscious effort. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions which often have opposing effects on bodily functions. And I know some of you may already be very intimately familiar with sympathetic and parasympathetic. The autonomic nervous system divisions. So we're going to talk about sympathetic and parasympathetic. Pa sympathetic division. This is a division that prepares the body for fight or flight responses in times of stress or danger. It increases our heart rate, dilates blood vessels, and activates other mechanisms that help the body respond to perceived threats. The parasympathetic division, this promotes rest and digest, helps us with the rest and digest state, and helps us to conserve our energy, slows down our heart rate, constricts blood vessels, stimulates digestion, and promotes relaxation and recovery. Your sympathetic and parasympathetic systems create a balancing act with each other. Your sympathetic nervous system activates the body processes, while your parasympathetic system deactivates or lowers them. That balance is key to your body's overall being and your ongoing survival. It involves multiple forms of communication. That's because your nervous system overall uses chemical compounds produced by various glands in your body and brain as signals for communication. It also uses electrical energy in the neurons themselves. The neurons switch back and forth between electrical and chemical communication as needed. There is another um, system that we haven't gone over yet, and that's your enteric nervous system, which is also very complex. Now, some experts describe it as part of the overall nervous system instead of the autonomic nervous system. And this is because there are as many neurons or specialized cells that make up your brain, spinal cord, and nerves in your enteric nervous system as there are in your spinal cord. So it's very complex. Now, in the enteric nervous system, it's a specialized division of the peripheral nervous system that is responsible for controlling the function of the gastrointestinal GI tract. It is often referred to as the brain of the gut because it operates independently of the central nervous system, but can also communicate with the central nervous system. Unlike other parts of the peripheral nervous system, the enteric nervous system can operate autonomously, generating reflexes and coordinating local responses within the GI tract. It contains sensory neurons that detect changes in the gut environment, interneurons that process and integrate the information, and motor neurons that stimulate the muscle contractions and control secretions. The enteric nervous system plays a crucial role in maintaining GI homeostasis, as it, and it also can be involved and is also involved in gastrointestinal disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome and others. Understanding the enteric nervous system and its interactions with the central nervous system is essential for comprehending gut function and developing targeted treatments for GI disorders. So I hope that this has helped giving top level definitions of the nervous system. I know it's super complex, very detail oriented, and we're going to dive into more details individually on the communication mechanisms. But I know you've heard these terms before when it comes to fibromyalgia, especially all of us being in fight or flight states or the central nervous system being involved with neuroinflammation or pain amplification. So we got to start with the basics. 
So again, thank you so much, my Support Fibro friends. I am Melissa Talwar. I am the Executive Director of the Support Fibromyalgia Network, and I'm also a board-certified functional medicine health coach. Take care. I will talk to you next time. Bye.